In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The, gospel of, the Holy Gospel according to John. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And whom that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spring, sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. How are you, everyone? I'm glad that at least in this form, we are able to uh, encounter and have some time to reflect upon the words of God. Around the time we are celebrating the Good Friday. As I just read, today's gospel saddens everyone because we've been witnessing many saddened stories. People come to make their confession and we do not greet them in the confessional but in the parking lot. And people contact us saying that their loved ones are being dead and dying. And we are engaged in their special moment around the time the loved ones are passing. And we do spiritual anointing of the phone and sometimes of the video. It is really an unusual time we are undergoing. But one thing that is sure is people try to come to their home. The home is our faith. And they want to hear from us saying that this person's soul is reposed in God. And we pray for those people who die, who are dying in this unfortunate time. Therefore, let's have courage. Everyone around this time is stressed. And when we talk about stress, there are four stages we need to be aware. Number one, there is always a stimulus. The current st stimulus is this pandemic disease, the COVID-19. They are definitely stimulus, and we are not happy with it. And this stimulus is one thing, but the way we perceive this stress and this stressor is another thing. That is called the, our thinking procedure after receiving the stimulus. And after we take it into our thinking procedure, we also encounter the reaction from our feelings and emotions toward our thinking. And sometimes we overreact. And apparently, this pandemic disease makes us overreactive to it. And finally, the fourth stage we are undergoing with this stress is we respond to these emotions by taking action, by taking it in behavior. Therefore, young people go around to enjoy their corona party. Some people try to be overly obsessive with all those symptoms. And to a degree, we are all freaked out and frightened with this pandemic disease and those symptoms. 
even small tickle, ticklish feelings on our throat, we begin to be suspicious whether we are on it. So we become highly obsessive with that. And this procedure and mass media and the way we think about the stimulus and the way we feel about the thinking, the way we take it in response toward the emotions and feelings in our action. They are more frightening than what's really happening. We can overcome with this pandemic disease and we can definitely survive from it as long as we protect ourselves well. But more importantly, we need to be emotionally and spiritually healthy. And this emotional and spiritual positive optimism, they will help us raise our immune system. We are believers and we are followers of Jesus. Today on Good Friday, all the Christians in the whole world, in union of our heart, we gather together to reflect upon the cross and true meaning for the cross. True meaning for the cross is not to torture us in a thought that in what way Jesus died, in what tremendous and unbelievably painful way Jesus died. That is not the key point. The key point on this passion narration is for what Jesus died. Jesus died apparently to deliver his new hope, his new visions in new garden. Today, Roman soldiers, they, they took the sponge to the mouth of Jesus. And this sponge was used to, for the Romans, Roman soldiers to clean their sweat and sometimes to clean their defecation. It's really a humiliating action to Jesus, to the criminals. And when Jesus dies, they needed to confirm by piercing with the spears. And the spear was put in the side. And from there, there was a water and blood coming out. In the garden story, God made Adam sleep. And by taking a rib out of his body, God made Eve. The sight means the promise, the real wedding between humanity and God. Here in this garden, even though this garden is located in the center of painful happenings, Jesus is standing firmly on the cross and showing his side, saying that, I will not forget you. You are my spouse. You are my bride. When Hearing his determination by showing his side, that is not to be confirmed that he was finally being dead, but is to show the hope that through this death, he shows that he would not be giving up on us. And he has this determination and this courage to share his hope as Christians, we need to hold on to his optimism and his courage and his hope. He constantly encourages us by saying, don't be afraid. And today, on the cross, in silence, I'm dying for the hope. Jesus saying in silence, I'm dying to share the hope in which you do, not be, you do not have to be afraid. We are encountering this stressful stimulus. 
And this st stimulus causes our negative thinkings. As we entertain more negative thinkings, we become emotionally more stirred up and confused and anxious. When our thoughts reach toward the negative direction, hold on to Jesus, the sight of Jesus from where, where he wanted to wed with us. When we begin to have this optimistic thought, then our emotions and our feelings, feelings will be turned toward the positive direction. Once we begin to be begin to have this positive direction, our actions and our behaviors will be turned positive, and therefore we will have better immune system, and our prefrontal cortex will be more cooperative in supporting us toward more hope. My sisters and brothers, we need to overcome this disastrous pandemic disease and this stressful time. On a special day, on Good Friday, we all reflect upon the meaning of cross. On the cross, Jesus offered himself to be our groom. Be as, as the bride of Jesus, we want to follow him. His optimism, the optimism he never gave up, even on his final breath on the cross. Let's hold on to it. And I'm hoping, and Father Horst and Father Anthony and myself, we are all hoping to meet you and saying, and having mass here in the church, we miss you all. I, I would like to invite all of you to close our prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespasses. Trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Well, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.